If you're searching the internet and wanting to know pros and cons of living in the Gunnison Crested Butte Valley, well, stay tuned, look no further. This video has it all, pros and cons. If you are an adventure seeker or a casual outdoor enthusiast, this Gunnison Crested Butte Valley may be just the place for you. Stay tuned. <music> still watching this you know what you want to do you're gonna drop those numbers into your phone we are the top relocation investment group here in Colorado we do real estate all over we do it every day we absolutely love it we'd love to help you we pride ourselves in communication getting you guys equity and a great investment here in the state of Colorado so drop those numbers into your phone give us a call or text it's us that answer we would love to help you make Colorado your home so Lori and I do a lot of videos of different places to live and invest throughout the entire state of Colorado. We love helping you all make real estate investments or making Colorado your home, but I absolutely love this video. This place truly does have my heart because this is my hometown. Uh, Gunnison Crested Butte is a valley that I grew up in uh, throughout my entire childhood playing in these mountains, living this lifestyle was what I grew up with and what has made me fall in love with Colorado over and over again. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you on a map where we are located at. So now looking from a map view. So the front range of Colorado, Colorado Springs, up this I-25 quarter to Denver is referred to as the front range. There are multiple mountains uh, right around here, Highway 24, um, and when you cross over those mountains, you are then over into what I refer to as the Western Slope of Colorado. So if you are looking, there are some direct flights into the Gunnison Regional Airport, um, but a lot of the flights and the more affordable flights you would fly into the Colorado Springs or Denver Airport, it's about a three to a four hour road trip then from one of those airports over to the Gunnison Valley, or you can look at connecting legs right into Gunnison Regional Airport. So once you arrive in the Gunnison Valley, uh, what you will find is a quaint smaller town, but actually a lot to do. There's um, a state college in the valley and so there definitely is always a melting pot of people moving through the community. Um, there's a lot of restaurants and bars, coffee shops, things to do and as you will see there's a lot of blue. There's definitely rivers and water scattered throughout the entire town and so there's a lot of places to float and raft. We'll get to lifestyle a little bit later but just wanted to point out from a map um, how those structures kind of lay. So if you head up Highway 135, you are still in Gunnison. You kind of hit North uh, Gunnison area, Ohio Creek. There's a small ski area called Craner Hill. And then you will come up to a small town called Almont. There is a Three Rivers Resort here, and because Three Rivers merge in this little town, so there's actually world-class fishing, fly fishing, and rafting uh, right near Elmont. As you approach this bend in the highway, you come up on Crested Butte South, which is actually a separate town than Crested Butte, the town, and then a third Crested Butte uh, mountain, so if you're looking at real estate, you definitely want to be zoned in on price point, lifestyle, what you expect out of these different areas. Some are ski in, ski out. Some are all about biking and outdoors. Other are incredible fly fishing. And so with that being said, there's a lot of different real estate to cover in this video. So you're going to want to stay tuned. Let's get right to it. Pro number one, Gunnison Crest Butte is definitely off the beaten path and a true destination. So I get to be the Debbie Downer, the con of investing, living in Crest Butte, Gunnison area 
is that it's harder to get to. So that's why it's important when you guys give us a call, we can listen to maybe the lifestyle that you guys are looking for. Do you want some place that you can fly directly into? There's not a ton of direct flights directly into that Gunnison area. And then you still have about 30 minutes to that Crest of Butte area for that skiing that we talk about all the time. But our clients tend to love this area if they want that Colorado feeling. Um, there are direct flights from um, a lot of places in Texas. Obviously, you get to Denver, direct flight from Denver. And then once you do arrive, there is good public transportation that can get you around to the different areas as well once you get there. But you know, if you're thinking of maybe getting there and spending three, four months there, that might be doable. If you're thinking of living there year round, obviously a great area to live in, beautiful Colorado, maybe not 105, 110 like you're experiencing in Texas if you're watching this. But just that is a downside to it. But a lot of people actually think that's a pro because you know it does make for more of that um, Colorado lifestyle. Not everyone's going in and out all the time, um, but a great option to invest and live in because of this. Enough of that negative talk, Lori. I want to talk about pros. So let's move on to pro number two. Pro number two, I could spend hours and hours on and I will not bore you with any of that, but there is definitely a culture, a lifestyle in the Gunnison Crest Butte area with many things to do for, especially for a small town. There are all sorts of um, art festivals and events. So, so festival number two, I wanna to talk to you real quick about is the Wildflower Festival. So this festival, because Crest Butte is the wildflower capital of the uh, United States, there are wildflowers scattered throughout all of the mountains. And so there are many different hikes you can do, whether they're guided or self-directed, uh, photography classes. There is hiking uh, with guides or all by yourself, different photography classes, and there's vintage posters that are made year after year. And again, you'll see them hanging throughout different homes and businesses throughout the community. Festival number three is the Fall Festival, or also known as Vinatalk. This is a festival that was created by locals in, I think it was like the early 70s, and it's all about the fall time. There are fire pits in the streets, and uh, there everybody makes these little crowns out of twigs and flowers and put them on their head, and they are welcoming in the fall, and hoping for a beautiful spring after this long winter. So the fall festival or Vinatalk is definitely one to check out. Festival number four, by far my favorite time of year up in Crested Butte. It's in the summer. It's not in the winter when you're skiing, but the 4th of July, amazing parade that goes up and down Elk Avenue up in Crested Butte. There's incredible fireworks on Mount Crested Butte and also down in the Gunnison Valley an incredible display of fireworks, live music, dancing. There's also a race that happens the morning of the 4th of July. I think it's a five or a 10K. You run down the mountain and at the end of the race, the fire department puts on a pancake breakfast for all of the racers and people watching the race to lead up to the parade and everything else for the 4th of July day. Fifth festival, I'm gonna to try to do this real quick, is the Crested Butte Film Festival. It is one of the biggest international film festivals in all of the United States. Um, kind of a big deal. People, different people showcase their greatest, strangest, and most exciting moments in cinema for independent films. There's a whole website on it, check it out. Pro number three, is that the Gunnison Crested Butte Valley offers a very active lifestyle. Whether you are an extreme athlete or a casual outdoorsman, this section's all for you. So I know this is going to be a big part of this video, but Crested Butte is a very active community. Next on the list is probably my husband's favorite, and it is snowmobiling. So snowmobiling, why is Crested Butte better than anywhere else? <laughs> well, haven't been to a whole lot of places outside of Crested Butte to snowmobile. Um, again, grew up there, tons of backcountry. I mean, great powder. There's everything from, 
you know, keeping it on the trail and beginner sledding to advanced, you know, off trail deep powder stuff. Well, and that's what I wanted to point out. Like James definitely is like the adventure seeker and I'm the casual outdoor enthusiast. I am not as extreme as him, but you can go on guided tours. You can go on self-guided, like rent snowmobiles for the day. Then there's like super extreme, like people that live up by Irwin Lodge that literally have to snowmobile in their groceries and not like if you want to live totally remote, you can do that too in Crested View. Yeah, and they also have uh, snowcat tours up there That's as well. Cool. Uh, a lodge, which I believe became private in the last few years, but just endless so country. So you can go up Irwin, you can go up what other places for snowmobiling? Um, Ohio Pass, which you can get from the south end coming out of Gunnison up there. That's a beautiful ride as well. Mm -hmm. um, just tons of country. I mean, you can go forever. Um, well, I'm going to flip this on you. So we're talking snowmobiling right now for winter, but then in the summer, spring, fall time, a lot of these passes you can even four wheel dirt bike over. So it's really year round adventure in these areas. I know we're like highlighting the winter part because that's kind of what these mountain towns are known for. But I would say summer, fall time, even spring is just as beautiful and like all new adventures with new different motorsports or hiking, which I think is probably your favorite. Yeah, lots of mountain biking <laughs> back there too and even hunting um, units 54 and 55, those areas, big trophy um, elk coming out of that area. So very popular, um, great hunting. Fishing. I mean, Irwin Lake is up there. Last thing on my list that I definitely wanted to talk about lifestyles, definitely more of a summer adventure, maybe spring, summer, fall, but it has to do with fishing and rafting, which is a major uh, part of the culture to the valley. Yeah. Um, another thing we grew up doing, we were fortunate enough to grow up on the river um, right in our backyard there. So Spent a lot of time in the water, uh, rafting and such, had some friends. Um, Your house backed up to the river. Yeah, so we, we got creative with that and <laughs> lots of fishing and rafting for sure. Um, Almont, which is a small town between North Gunnison and South Crested Butte, is actually, there's a resort there called Three Rivers because Three Rivers merge into that area so up that canyon is what, what do you call it like trophy fly fishing i don't know what you call it. yeah basically um taylor reservoir up that way three rivers is taylor river and the east river meet to form the gunnison right there in almont um, and you can fish for miles in every direction so fly fish you can raft down the rivers there's tons of i think scenic river tours one of our friends still owns um but as far as rafting you can do it for fun for leisure they even have um i think it's around father's day a couple different festivals right on the river uh they do the tightrope what do you call that the slack line uh challenges across the river or of course fly fishing regular fishing and there's ponds throughout the whole city we used to even just go over by the softball fields in the town of gunnison and they have a stocked pond right there that they have fishing derbies for okay so next on the list for lifestyle i wanted to talk about biking so mountain biking there's all sorts of different trails really we used to live right behind hartman rocks which is actually in the Gunnison Valley. There's many different places to go up in Crested Butte as well. Lots of single track. You can actually, um, if you're coming just for an experience, you can ride the chairlift up in Mount Crested Butte and uh, bike down the mountain, which is more my style. If you try to ride your bike, I remember when we had our youngest daughter or our oldest daughter, I should say, James was working up in Crested Butte and I rode my bike down into town I thought oh I'm just going on a bike ride and I'll ride back up to our house I could not make it back up the mountain I was like James can you come pick me up <laughs> so I mean it's extreme because you were talking extreme elevations even from the town of Crested Butte up to the mountain but Hartman Rocks in the Gunnison Valley there are tons of trails 
um, to bike all over there as well. Um, same as running, a lot of the same trails that are used in the biking are also for running. And one thing I wanted to bring up, it's a race called the Grand Traverse where it kind of blends uh, biking, running, and skiing all in one. It's an extreme uh, race. It, I'm going to just read off a couple facts. So it goes from Aspen to Crested Butte. Um, over 40 miles with over 3,000 feet ascent up a mountain, like total extreme. They have their own webpage for this event, but the Grand Traverse is kind of the, uh, a, the, the top notch athletes, like what they strive to do. And it's actually held in the Crested Butte area. So I'm back with some bad news. Another con is that it is cold sometimes in that Gunnison Crested Butte in the middle of winter. So January, the high average is negative one. Yes, write that down, negative one. So it is a little bit cold. So a lot of our clients, um, when they do invest in these areas, number one is they must love that outdoor lifestyle that we talk about. Um, whether that's skiing, investing in that great ski gear, um, snowmobiling, they love that winter as well. Or they will fly in for the summertime, spend their summers in that area as well. Um, or then fly in for a couple weeks to enjoy that winter. I'm going to get cold. rid of her cons because even though it's negative one, there is tons of sunshine. That's true. I'll let her keep doing her Almost thing. Almost 250 days of sunshine. So I do get as cold, but you do have that sun. And, you know, especially love. So here's the, the pro of that is in the summer in July, the average high in this area is 75 degrees. So that may feel amazing to you when you are with humidity in 110 if you live in some of those states texas arizona florida where you want some relief from that heat this that could also be a pro of that area they do do they do do it's great with their snow plowing as far as that goes so you know the roads are plowed easy access to all these places you know you might have to go over some passes if you're if you're driving in um, or flying from that airport so that could be a con as well um, but you are thinking they are at almost 9,000 feet in elevation. So you are up there a little bit. So it could be a con as well. And this video in particular, I'm super excited about all the information all about my hometown. So if you're thinking of making the move to Colorado, to Gunnison, Crested Butte area, Front Range, Lori and I do real estate throughout the entire state. We love making these videos. We love even more making Colorado your home. So save these numbers into your phone. Give us a text, give us a phone call. It's us who you talk to. We'd love to help you navigate a move to Colorado or uh, investment purchase here in Colorado. Pro number four is there are there's tons of produce and fresh meats all locally so you can eat real well. As a pro, I had down some of the incredible food available in this valley. So because Gunnison is a ranching community, there are some smaller ranches that on Sundays in Crested Butte, there is a great farmer's market. So some of the vendors come from the Gunnison Valley. There's again, a lot of ranching. And so you'll have some of their meats, poultries, Along with that at the farmer's market, a lot of the vendors come from a little bit further west in Cedar Edge, Paonia, Hotchkiss, Palisade, and those areas are really known for their produce. So you'll have Palisade peaches over in Palisade. There's also a lot of wineries. There is a Cedar Edge. They're very well known for their apples, Paonia cherries, and the Hotchkiss Delta area is a great um, area for farming. And so there is a lot of other produces that will be available at the farmer's market. So with that being said, not only does the Gunnison Crested Butte Valley have incredible restaurants and places to eat, but an incredible farmer's market again on Sundays in the town of Crested Butte. I'm back with another con. So one can be it's all about perspective, right? But 
the real estate in these mountain areas in Colorado can run a pretty penny. So when you're looking at Gunnison, your average price point is about 550. When you're nearing that Crest of Butte area, you're approaching closer to 900,000. But I'm gonna hop on the map and kind of show you what that looks like for real estate. So when our clients call us, we like, what we talk about is always that lifestyle they want. You know, do you want to be close to a golf course? Do you want to be closer to biking? Do you want to bike through a little that little town and then maybe drive to that ski area? So we're always trying to listen to what your budget is. You know, do you want land? Do you want a certain type of lifestyle? So that's what we specialize in. When you guys reach out to us, again, put those numbers in your phone. Give us a call at any time. We'd love to help you um, make that investment here in Colorado. So let's jump on the computer. I'm going to show you exactly what that looks like as far as numbers go here when you reach out to us. All right, so I am just looking at a general map here and I kind of want to show you. So down here, this is that Gunnison area. You have some homes that are in this area here. This is more of that golf course in the southern part of Gunnison. This is more of when you're actually in the gut town of Gunnison, um, closer to that downtown, if you want to call it that, in Gunnison. And these homes up here, you can see green usually means forest. Green usually means, um, you know, that natural forest. Um, that's resides there. So you have a little bit more land in some of these homes up here. And then as you go up here, you're going to run into um, Crest of Butte area. So I'm going to start down in Gunnison and just zoom in real quick and kind of show you what that looks like. Just give you a couple examples, right? When you reach out, we're going to go through a detailed list of this and kind of see what's active and kind of give you some examples um, and show you them in person, obviously, or go virtually show them to you. So 850, more on that golf course, four beds, three bath, 22, 2300 square feet, um, obviously in fairway lane, so closer to that golf course. Um, as we get up here, like I noted, these are more, have more acreage, so closer to a million, two bed, two bath, um, almost 3,700 square feet with a little bit more land, seclusion, that uh, privacy you get in Colorado with those mountains as well. Um, so then if I go north here, you can see we're fitting into um, Crest of Butte here. So all these squiggly lines right here is a ski resort. So you're going to have more of these large homes, like here's a $15 million home. So $15 million home, if you need eight bedrooms and you want to clean 10 bathrooms and you want 7,500 square feet, we can find that for you um, in the area of Crest of Butte, which is on 35 acres. Um, otherwise, a lot of other options are the ski in, ski out, um, condos for sale, two beds, three bath, 878 square feet for uh, closer to 700,000. And you have everything in between. So anything from, you know, six, 700,000 for condos all the way up to 15 million if you want that 10 bathroom home. So. It is relative, right? If you're looking at other places in Colorado, this may seem a little more affordable, but again, mountain towns do carry a higher price point for real estate. So that's why you're gonna give us a call. We wanna make sure you get a good investment, some good equity into um, this investment you're about to um, undertake, and you really wanna enjoy it for years to come. Pro number five, and I think I'm winning because I believe there's only two cons so far we've came up with. But pro number five is all of the schools and opportunities in the valley. So we have Gunnison County Schools, great 4-H programs, outdoor classes. Uh, the schools are very well funded. If you go up to Crested Butte, again, very well funded programs. They have an incredible hockey, soccer. I believe they've taken state the last couple years. Um, incredible athletes train up at these areas as well because of the higher altitude. Uh, there's also Western State College down in the Gunnison Valley, which is one of the state colleges. Um, they have some pretty unique uh, courses and different degrees there. So there is mountain rescue, land management, a lot of business courses and education. They have, again, incredible athletics at that school and a great culture as well. Number six, the Gunnison Valley and the Crested Butte area definitely pride themselves on not allowing bigger corporations to set up storefronts into the valley. Since there has been a change of ownership that shifted just a little, down in Gunnison, they are getting a Starbucks, there's Subway, Arby's, uh, McDonald's, but most of the restaurants and shopping is locally owned mom and pop restaurants, storefronts. 
When you go up to Crested Butte, you will find no chain restaurants, no big corporations. It is all 100% locally owned, smaller business, and definitely unique. You will have to go up to Crested Butte to get secret stash pizza. You will have to go down to Mario's Pizza down in Gunnison for their half and half wooden bowl pasta salad. There is none other like it because they are locally owned and not anything you can get just anywhere. Ooh.